As you can see, I have combined intro, solo and ending, so let's go piece by piece. Intro starts like this. Two times. What's important here? First of all, obviously these slides up and immediately down. What else is important? Well, rhythm and picking directions. Let's elaborate. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four. And then what about picking directions? Watch my right hand. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four. So, as usual, with alternate picking, once it is one, two, three, or four, we go down, and on end, we go up upstroke. But that would mean in this context, and that's what is important, that this first low A on fifth string, you will have to play it two times down strokes, and then two times with up strokes. And then it continues. have this chord shape, it's our conventional A at this high A on fifth string, first string, sorry, fifth fret, or E, second string, fifth fret, and this E is the first note of this league. And then we have some double stop fun. Let's play the whole intro. And then solo begins. It begins like this. Well, what we have here is actually A69 chord, this shape. Cliff's, Cliff Gallop's favorite. And what Grady does. He bends this note on 3rd string, which is B, a part of this A69. So he bends this note to C. And once he does this, it's not A69 anymore, but it's rather 
an A minor arpeggio. Releasing the band. And the notes we can hear in between these ones. These also belong to the same A69 shape. So these are E, second string, fifth fret, and then what's this? This is F sharp, fourth string, fourth fret, and again E. As you can see, I help with index finger of my right hand. I believe Grady did it actually with his pick, like this. Finally, the rhythm of this lick is the following. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, and two, and three, and four. And one, two, three, four. One, and two. And slowly releasing the band. Now the next lick is again going to be interesting. It sounds actually like this. And this is nothing else but a chromatic movement. Right before that we still stayed on this A69 chord, so on third string we had this B note, and we are going all the way to E, chromatically. I mean this E, or actually you can play it also here on third string. It will be ninth fret. So once we are, once we have released the band, we are quickly moving finger to fifth fret. And here we are doing a half tone band to this E note. band at A on fifth, sorry, first string fifth fret. And if you listen to the recording, you might find that this chromatic movement sounds somewhat sloppish. Yeah, Grady struggled a little bit, I believe he simply ran out of his fingers. So once he did this, he realized that it might be not very convenient to use his pinky and then jump back to fifth string with his index and probably decided, ah, who cares, I will do simply a band. And after that, Finally, we have something more conventional, a pentatonic line. In the end of this pentatonic line, we have Grady signature slides, which are kind of a combination of a quick slide, quick slides, and a little bit longer slides. So it goes like this. Quick slide, a longer one, another longer one, and yet one more quick one. And the last quick one doesn't go to E on the eighth, is it eighth? Seventh, eighth, ninth. So it doesn't go to E on ninth fret, it goes to E flat on eighth fret. Well, I realize you might get a little bit lost already. At least I'm lost where we are, so I will play the solo from the beginning. 
until this point. It will go like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, and two, and three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, and two. And then some fun begins. Here this lick, apart from its first notes, So these notes you can still explain in some lick in the key of A major, but the rest isn't based uh, neither on scales nor on pentatonics, it's purely some fretboard geometry. So the same pattern, the same group of notes repeats going from high E string to fifth string. Twice on second string. Then fifth string, first fret open fifth string. Now what about right hand? Let me show you. Grady plays it actually like this. Hammer on and pull off and then no pull offs, no hammer ons, just picking. Second time on second string, it's pull-offs. Third string, it's picking again. And from that, it's again pull-offs. And then pull-off from first fret on fifth string to open fifth string. Once again, I actually have to admit that I'm lazy and I have some issues with my right hands. Maybe it's about using this thumb pick not being the best for speedy picking or whatever. So just for myself I have simplified uh, and you can see that on the demo in the beginning of this video I was using pull-offs everywhere like this. In this kind of tempo, it probably doesn't matter and pretty much no one would notice that you are not 100% true to what Grady does, but if you want to be true to Grady's playing, you will have to practice speedy picking. And then the final leak of the solo. As easy as it gets, kind of preparing us to the next verse. And from here I fast forwarded it all the way to the ending, but there was almost two bars of gap, so I decided to fill it with yet one more Grady Sleek uh, that he plays somewhere in between verses, 
in this very soft drinking wine spotty odi, uh, which goes like this. So it's simply kind of question and answer game between high E on first string fifth fret and low E on sixth string same fret. And then ending. Once again, one, two, three, four, one. And one, and two, and three. And that was Drinking Wines Podiori. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.